In this video, I'm going to share with you my first impressions of a note-taking app called Notability. Let's get into it. So this year I'm experimenting quite a bit with digital note taking tools specifically for sketch noting, bringing in quickly sketched scenes and diagrams to add more visual components to the note taking process. And for a while now, the only digital note taking tool that I had been using was the app Procreate. But in connection with a new course that I'm developing this year called digital sketch noting, I decided to branch out and look at the broader landscape of note taking apps experiment with them myself so that I could better understand the pros and cons of the options out there and share those pros and cons with you to help you make a similar decision. So let's get into it. I'm going to walk you through my first few experiences using Notability. With these very first notes here, I was just trying to get comfortable with this note-taking environment. Doing a little bit of writing and drawing, I appreciated right off the bat how you can get those heavier strokes with the same brush, but just adding more pressure. And that pressure sensitivity is one of the nice things with apps like these, because it makes your writings and drawings feel more handmade than if it's just always a constant line weight. And then right off the bat here, I started experimenting with this constant scroll feature, which I also appreciated, how you can roll right from one page to the next. And it felt natural and intuitive to just use my finger for scrolling and the pen for writing and drawing. And with just a little bit of experience in this note-taking environment, I started to think about how I might approach sketch noting, keeping the full frame in view, moving left to right and then top to bottom, scrolling down as I need more space, avoiding zoom wherever possible, and leaning into to this top to bottom approach. Thinking of it as kind of one continuous column that you're working with and making use of as much of your iPad screen real estate as possible. It's great how you don't even have to add a new page. It just automatically appears when you need it. And here's where I started experimenting with potential layout options within a given section of these top to bottom notes. One option being to kind of split the page in half down the middle, maybe have a scene on the left, more text on the right, or potentially fill the entire screen from left to right with a bigger scene and embed the words within that scene. Here I'm experimenting with a headline to help differentiate between different sections of your notes, applying more pressure to get that slightly bolder font. And here I'm using the scissor tool for the very first time, which again was incredibly intuitive. I didn't have to look up any sort of guide to figure out what each of those tools up top mean and what they do. And right off the bat, since my only comparison at this point is Procreate, I loved how easy it was to pick a certain section of your notes and move it to wherever you want it to go. To do something similar within Procreate, you have to first put things on different layers and then decide which layer you want to move and move that one to its appropriate place. This process is much quicker. I also can see how this kind of pointer tool might come in handy for making videos like these or giving presentations where you want to point to a particular section in your notes without actually making marks on the page. And here I am again using that scissor tool to rearrange these sections of notes. Loving the process. Way easier than using layers within Procreate to do something similar. And then experimenting with the highlighter tool and appreciating that as well. And overall, what I feel like I was most impressed with during this very first note taking session here was the speed of the tool and how great it felt to move with such speed because of the intuitiveness of the app. And already here, I'm kind of kicking myself for waiting so long to try this app out. And I think what makes this a great tool for sketch noters is that there's not a whole lot of tool switching going on. In the process of switching from one tool to another or changing the color or picking a slightly different brush size, that all happens pretty quickly. And experiencing that here kind of helped me identify this digital sketch noting principle of the less tool switching, the better. Because any time spent in a menu or turning some feature on and off or finding a particular layer, that's time when your attention is drawn away from whatever it is you're taking notes on. From there, I experimented with some of the export options. I like that you can share this as a PDF, that you can choose whether you want that background dot grid that I had turned on, whether you want that to show up, 
whether you want margins or not. These export options are pretty handy. And I like that you can email them to yourself or to others, or just save them to your photos folder on your device. So right after that first little bit of experimenting, I was pretty excited about the potential that I saw in this tool and wanted to try it during an actual sketchnoting session. So I decided to pull up my podcasting app, find a relatively short episode to give it a try. I went with one of my favorite podcasts, The Accidental Creative, hosted by Todd Henry. And on that day, Todd's guest happened to be someone that I know, Chris Gillibo. I actually had the opportunity to contribute some sketchnote illustrations to one of Chris's earlier books called Born for This. But in this podcast episode, he's talking about his latest book, The Money Tree. And here's how my sketch notes of their half an hour conversation came together. You can see how much I like to keep things centered. I turned to that scissor tool pretty quickly to move exactly where Todd Henry's name went, then brought some imagery in as quickly as possible with a sketch connected to the title of Chris's new book and leaned into some highlighter use. In the past, I haven't brought a whole lot of color into my note-taking process, but I've really been enjoying with a tool like this how easy it is to add color and how it really does help make certain sections of your notes stand out. And for these notes, I chose to not let myself pause the conversation. And for me, whenever I'm taking notes in real time, I tend to stick with pretty simple imagery. And for each individual idea, I'll come up with some visual and then some text to live alongside it. And then whenever possible, I can connect related ideas with lines or arrows. And here I'm continuing to experiment with that highlighter tool, sometimes using it to kind of enclose a few words completely, other times using it more as a underlining tool, and then also using it here to help indicate the transition to a new section of the conversation. Here you see me stop midway through one sketch in order to get the particular phrasing of another idea as it came in. That's a technique that you might might use when you're doing live sketch noting. Get the start of an idea down in a sketch or the first start of a phrase, enough to remind you of what else is there, but then let yourself capture a new phrase that comes up if you want to make sure to get the wording of that new phrase correct because then you can go back and fill in the details of the first sketch. And here I'm incorporating gray for the first time, which I often use as a helper color, and then transitioning to the next page, giving myself a clean screen to work with, trying out different brush sizes for the highlighter tool when more precision is needed. And I didn't have too much of a plan in place for how I would use each color. I just picked one in the moment that felt appropriate for the idea that I was highlighting. And from time to time, continuing to rely on that scissor tool to rearrange ideas, move them into a slightly better position. And within each sketch note that I create, I like to include links to the source material as well as the primary thing being discussed, in this case, Chris's new book, but then also sign the sketch notes and let people know where they can explore my work. During that sketchnoting session, I also used the audio record feature for the first time, and I don't have great speakers in here, so I just played the podcast episode from my phone, and I just now looked back at how cool that feature is, because you can replay your notes, essentially, scrub along the timeline to different points in whatever it is you are listening to and taking notes on, and see your notes come together while being able to re-listen to that audio. And really, I, I can't think of a better person, Chris, to write this book. And it always, the more expensive it's going to be, the riskier it's going to feel. Or you can crank up the time investment and, you know, then you can spend less money. But if you're willing to put in the time, really anybody, anybody can find uh, a stream of revenue. It's not developed a full flight of business. So I could see that coming in handy for folks that are taking notes during lectures and class or going to workshops and conferences. Because sometimes hearing just a little snippet of the conversation that was going on, that can help add some useful context to whatever you are able to capture within the notes themselves. So pretty impressed with that feature as well. And what I think that note-taking experience confirmed for me was how well this particular app is suited for kind of a fast 
fast-paced, live sketch noting. Because of how easy it is to continue that scroll, switch from one tool to the next, move things around with that scissor tool, highlight as needed, all of those features help you keep up with the flow of information that's coming in. With that said, there's plenty of opportunity to take your time with this tool and add a little more detail to your images and use of color. I did a little bit of that during my third experience with Notability when I created a sketch in response to a prompt that I had posed within the verbal to visual community where the current monthly theme is build your visual vocabulary. The prompt was to practice some new icons related to food by sketching out something that you've cooked and or eaten recently. I decided to sketch out a meal that my wife and I made a couple nights back. One of my favorites that I don't make as often as I should, pizza. So with this one, it was fun to take a little bit more time on the images and my style has never been particularly artistic so the imagery is still fairly simple but it was nice to add in a few more details here and there experiment with adding color in different ways and even using the same brush size throughout this getting some different font sizes by increasing the pressure that's what I did for the title of pizza night and also for those different sections of the dough the sauce and the toppings I did leave a letter out of the word sketch when I signed this one, but outside of that, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It was a fun skill building activity. So after those handful of experiences that I have now had with this app, I can say that it's one that I definitely recommend for sketch noters. It's got the right amount of simplicity to it as a note taking tool, enough constraints to the experience so that you don't get lost in all that tool switching, but still plenty of variety within those tools and nice aspects of those tools themselves since this is built as a note taking app to easily weave those into your sketch noting process. And even if you've had just a a little bit of experience using a tablet to draw or write, this app will feel really intuitive to you. That's one of the things that I really appreciate about it. And with that said, there is much more experimenting for me to do, and I plan to continue using this app. And if you have used this app in a way that I didn't just demonstrate, but you think other sketch noters might appreciate hearing, do share those with us in a comment down below. And if you would like to explore the topic of digital sketch noting with me and others as I work on this new course throughout the year, do go check out Verbal to Visuals Online Classroom. I will link to that down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun experimenting with this tool yourself. And I look forward to chatting with you again in the next video. Till then.